This incomplete MacBook Pro was given to me by a guy named Vui here in Adelaide, but what exactly is it still good for? Well, let's find out. And this here is the headless laptop, and I believe it was mentioned as being a 2012 model, missing quite a few components as we can see here. I put a bit of tape over the battery to simply hold it in place for now. To test this out, we're going to need some RAM, ideally two sticks for maximum performance. 8GB in total would be ideal, however we should be able to get by with the 4GB I simply had lying around. But that's not all we're going to need, there's an empty slot where an optical drive used to be, which I plan on filling with this, a SATA drive adapter I had lying around unused in a drawer. For backing up files, we can use this random 500GB drive I pulled out of a dead laptop. And as our main drive, we can use this inexpensive solid state drive that was only 22 Australian dollars. That's an absolute bargain. During this video, we'll also redo the thermal paste and see if the fans are clogged at all with dust. To power this laptop, we'll also need a charger, an 85 watt model for this particular laptop. First of all, I simply put in the two sticks of RAM so that we can see if at the very least it turns on correctly. We get fans spinning up and after a few seconds, the boot chime plays. Now to see if it outputs video. I grab the monitor, which has this bird's seal of approval, plugged in the DisplayPort adapter and turned on the Mac. At first, nothing seemed to be coming through. But after shutting it off and doing a PRAM reset by clicking Command Option PR, I finally got some video being output on the screen. And today's video was made possible thanks to Opera, the feature-rich and secure browser with integrated AI tools. Opera is super fast and easy to download, with advanced features such as a built-in free VPN, ad blocker and tracker blocker all enabled with a few simple clicks of your mouse. The advantages of Opera don't stop there. AI tools such as ChatGPT and ChatSonic are built right in. Once enabled in the settings, you've got easy access to powerful AI prompts. It could even write a song about me. More generative AI services are coming soon, so download now to be the first to access these updates. Make Opera look the way you want to, with the ability to easily enable dark mode and even force all web pages to do the same. Changing your background is also a piece of cake. There are tons of free ones in the library to choose from, both animated and static. Switching from another browser, well, you're in luck. Your bookmarks and passwords can be synced within seconds. A new feature which I found pretty cool are pin boards, which enable you to consolidate your favorite and most used links and pages in one convenient place. You can make as many as you'd like and share them with whoever you want. You can change the layout to suit your needs and even choose whatever background your heart desires. So what are you waiting for? Enhance your browsing experience today with Opera. Links are in the description and below in the comments. Next, I attempted to boot to an installer USB. Once in the installer, I decided to test out the keyboard. Thankfully, all of the keys seemed to function properly. Knowing that the laptop, minus all the parts, was working well, it was time to put in an SSD. For $22, you can't expect anything fast. However, this will be way faster and more responsive compared to the mechanical drive this would have shipped with well over 10 years ago. To fit it in the shock mounted slot, it requires four torque screws, and I just happen to have some in this parts container for just such an occasion. I'd highly recommend buying a heap of these screws for next to nothing online, or simply take useful components out of scrapped laptops that you've got lying around. The 2012 MacBook models were the last ones to use the 2.5 inch SATA drive. All the newer ones use a proprietary solid state memory card, which was removable up until 2017. The Mac thankfully recognized the new drive. This was quite a relief. With it formatted, I began the installation and a short time later, we were in Mac OS. And I can also confirm that this is one of the higher end 2012 models with the one gigabyte GT650M graphics. With it all functional once again, let's give it a clean out and complete our headless laptop. If your laptop screen ever becomes damaged, you could always get a replacement panel. And a lot of Apple ones can be pretty expensive though. And don't make your repairs any more expensive or difficult for yourself either. Be extra careful when disconnecting the fan connectors. It's also definitely worth looking up a tutorial for your specific model if you aren't confident. There can be many screws and connectors which you might miss. Using this iFixit magnetic mat, I draw up a diagram of the logic board. With a good idea of the screw locations, I began the removal of the logic board, which isn't all that dusty, especially considering this was previously run without the back casing on at all. If you've successfully removed every screw and the heatsink hasn't melted to the keyboard backlight, it should come out without much force. The underside of the board is where you'll find the heatsink for both the CPU and graphics processor. They share the same one and aren't known for running all that cool, hence why a fresh application of thermal paste will give the cooling system its best possible chance. 
and upon first inspection, it does look as if it was repasted at some point. If it was original, it would be far harder and more like dust rather than paste. To get the dye surface absolutely spotless and free of debris, a bit of isopropyl alcohol is recommended. With the earlier 2011 MacBooks and iMac models, it was very common for the AMD graphics chips to basically melt themselves, requiring either a reballing or a replacement of the chip entirely. With the 2012 models, however, I haven't heard much of them going wrong since they aren't using the defective AMD chips. To help extend the life of these laptops, making sure that the air exhausts aren't clogged is super important. You can tell this heatsink has gotten pretty hot in the past though, as some of the lettering from the GPU is basically burnt onto the copper surface. And while the Mac is in pieces, it's a good time to dust out the casing. This isn't super important, however I figure you might as well do it if you can. That also means there will be less dust to make its way into the fans, which is surprisingly clean in this Mac. Now it's time for the most controversial thing you can ever do as a tech YouTuber, and that would be applying some thermal paste. Since there is no integrated heat spreader, it's critical to apply enough to cover the entire processor die. And with the paste applied, the mat can be pieced back together, first with the careful placement of the board. I simply can't stress enough how important it is to clean out your laptop's fans. My Dell gaming laptop was nearly clogged after two years, and when it came to the extra storage drive, I needed one of these connectors, which I salvaged from another dead MacBook. The best part is that a lot of these components were used through several models and years, making them extremely easy to get a hold of. And since that drive adapter wasn't really made for this Mac, I simply used some electrical tape to stop it moving around too much. From another parts MacBook, I borrowed some screws for the battery and found a back casing that fit pretty well. Again, this is a part that was used from 2009 through to like 2012. Several case screws were also borrowed from the donor laptop. And to make for a slightly more ergonomic typing experience, I thought I'd prop up the back of the laptops with these little razors. Last of all, I gave the casing a wipe down with a healthy dose of eucalyptus oil. The raised keyboard definitely helps with typing and may also give it slightly better heat dissipation. Now I present to you the desktop of the future from 2012. This is a surprisingly decent little setup for basic tasks and web browsing. Since Apple had truly excellent laptop trackpads, I didn't feel the need to use an external mouse. With nearly every Windows laptop, games like Minecraft are basically uncontrollable using the trackpad. This Mac handled it really well. For light gaming, this is totally fine. Super Tux Cart ran well at 1080p, although since this laptop's battery doesn't appear to be working, the performance is basically halved sadly. But that didn't stop me from playing one of my favourite games, Old School RuneScape, which has no trouble on here. Even with the limited performance due to the ruined battery, 1440p YouTube playback and web browsing was pretty good. This is even more impressive when you remember that this Mac only has 4GB of RAM. 8GB should be the minimum these days, but you can totally get by with 4. But how exactly does it compare to the exact same model but with a working battery? I put the faster, higher capacity RAM in the headless Mac and am testing it against my trusty 2012 MacBook with a working battery. Even with the faster RAM, which honestly makes basically no difference to performance, the lack of a battery leaves it significantly slower. In the GPU test, the score is literally half, and in the CPU test, the working battery Mac scores nearly three times as much. The complete MacBook, even running off the battery, is far ahead. If you don't have much room for a full desktop setup, a headless laptop can be a good alternative. With a small footprint, reasonable CPU performance, and that's if your battery is working, and best of all, low power consumption. This makes for a good setup for next to no money. If your MacBook has a broken display, it might not actually be worth buying a new screen. However, that doesn't mean your laptop is completely useless. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.